Hey, in today's video, we will be going over uh, rounding over legs and sanding the legs and attaching them to the base. For each of the legs, this is the bottom of the bottom shelf, I'm just countersinking two holes for the legs. And then putting in a screw. And holding in the legs. So I'm going to do that to all four legs. Since this is the bottom, I don't care where they're lined up. Again, my legs are two inches by an inch and a half, so I'm just making sure that it doesn't clear the, the uh, radius on the circle here. Okay, so I've got the base, I've got the legs screwed in here, and there's enough room to slide it in this way, but not this way, because again, my legs were two inches by an inch and a half, just the wood that I had, so I can twist it and pull it out there, but it goes in the front and back uh, fine. Now the one thing with uh, the bucket on top, everything works. Uh, obviously my hose to pull down here is a little short. I got two options. Uh, most of these what I've seen is people uh, do a radius here in the shelf so that the hose goes back in deeper. I've also seen people do these where they take the handle off so that it gives them more room. I have not screwed in these top legs. I'm just testing the fit. Um, if you remove the handle, when you unlatch this to pull the top off to empty this bucket or change the filter, there's nothing to grab onto here other than the handle to be able to pull this up. So I don't want to remove the handle. But I've got three inches of play here and I don't need that much. So I'm going to chop two inches off my legs, which will give me a much closer fit here and possibly without having to do extra work to radius this off. 
So I'm going to give that a try first. So for each of the legs, I'll cut two inches off and I'll come back and test fit again. All right, here on the second test fit, I chopped two inches off of each of the legs on top. Um, and you can see I still have about an inch of clearance. Now, before when I tried to pull this hose down, it was taking the bucket and going forward like that. So what some people do is they put a clip on the back to hold the bucket down. Uh, with it this way right now, I don't need to do that. And it doesn't look like I need to cut a notch. Now what I don't know is once I plug it in and create suction, if that force will pull it, or once you put a hose in here to actually vacuum, will pulling this cause it to tip? So I'll wait to do that. That's easy enough to throw a clip on. But for right now, I'm gonna screw in the top legs. So now that I got the top screwed on, um, I'm gonna add the wheels. And the way I want my wheels is I want them out as far as possible for stability of the cart, um, but I don't want the wheels sticking out too much. So what I've done here is the wheel just barely overhangs the outside, which I'm fine with, which for me with these wheels is about an inch and a half in either directions. So typically what I'll do is I'll measure an inch and a half, inch and a half, put the plate down, and then mark the screw holes. In reality, other than the placement of the wheel, it doesn't matter if your plate is crooked, if your plate is sideways, you can do each one of them differently as long as it's mounted on here and secured on here. Because these wheels swivel, it really doesn't make a difference how they go on. As long as you're sticking to the, again, the overage of, you don't want the wheel hanging too far over on either side. So I'm going to do that next. Um, I got to go find my drill bits though. So I will, the way I'll do this is I'll drill a hole, put one screw in, and then um, drill and put the other screws in. <coughs> what I won't do is drill all four holes first and then put this over here and screw it in because the holes may be off. It may shift as I try to lay it out. So for me, I'm just going to, generally I do this. I mark each one just where I want the, the uh, wheels to go. So I'll do that with this last one. But when I go to mount these, I will actually just drill one hole, put a screw in, and then do the other ones as I go. One of the things I was going to do, this cart's upside down though, was put in some cross braces here to screw this in. Reality is, this thing doesn't move. Uh, it's half on a, a pad and half off. That's why it's moving now. But this thing is not twisting, is not moving, is not doing anything. You know, depending on how thick your legs are and how you screw it in, that may be the case. Uh, if I find out later that I need to adjust and put cross beams in, I can. I've got the ability to with the way I designed this. For right now, I don't need to do it. The other thing people do is in the top, again, this is upside down, is screw holes to put all the accessories in. Now with this NXT system, you can put the accessories in the wheel cubbies, that's where they have most of this, or in the, in the cubby cart in the back, tool cart in the back. Uh, I'm gonna leave this as is. One of the reasons is you'll see in other videos that they do that is these are straight tubes. With this new NXT system, they all have this locking mechanism on here to lock it to the hose and to lock it in place. And the problem is now when you try to drill a, you know, two and a half inch hole to slide these into on the top, uh, those clips will cause a problem. So I'm going to try and just use it natively like this. I may um, unwrap the cord and tie it to the cart somehow. And I still haven't figured out where I really want to put the hose. So those I'll deal with later. So I've adjusted what I said before. Um, actually for the wheels, I'm not drilling the hole. I'm using these. Uh, SPAC screws here using three quarter inch. So my plywood is three quarter inch and then the lip of this wheel is about an eighth of an inch. So by using three quarter inch I'm not going to go through. But these screws are have a self drilling basically edges which doesn't require me to drill. Um, not product placement, not uh, not getting paid to advertise. I just use these. Um, so saves a step of drilling. Um, and again, just slide them in there like that. And that's enough for my wheel. Now these, these screws are a little small for the space. Uh, these are my number eights, I believe. Yeah, number eights. I would have gone normally with a number 10, but I didn't have any. So this is what I'm going for. 
um, and that works fine. So I will add the other other feet now. So I'll add the other wheels now. Okay, now that I got the cart wheels on, it rolls fine, um, and I plugged it in for the first time. So I'm going to see how this all, how it all sounds and works. So it all works fine as expected. I didn't have to notch this out like I originally thought. But with the vacuum on and the hose on the front, the bucket does lean uh, and tilt in. So I think I will look at putting a clip here on the back to hold the bucket down while it's in use so that way it doesn't flip up. Uh, and for that, I'll, I'll just do a little block with a little slide thing that goes over the groove there. And uh, now it should be all fine. So there we go. Next step is to paint it. I'm going to paint it black uh, because I don't have orange paint and I only have black paint and might as well use it.